She harbors a deeply cynical view of the traditional family and thinks kids should be able to sue their parents to resolve family arguments. In an article, Children Under the Law, she equates the legal minority status of children to slavery and thinks married women should be emancipated. She even equates the family itself with slavery and the Indian reservation system. She served in 1987-88 as director and chair of the board of directors of the New World Foundation. In 1987, Hillary and the New World gave $15,000 to the National Lawyers Guild, which was founded as an adjunct to the American Communist Party. In 1988, she gave $5,000 to the Committee in Support of the People of El Salvador, which was a support group for the communist guerrillas in El Salvador. The list goes on and on to include scores of other more obscure but equally radical left-wing groups. Hello, this is Hillary Clinton. The system's broke and it's time to fix it. What, like with a cloth or something? No, well, no. She didn't just delete tens of thousands of those emails. She wiped the server clean. The server um, will remain uh, private. I've been the most transparent public official in modern times, as far as I know. Is this how you do it? Roping off the press and their questions from even talking to you at a parole? Nothing that was sent at the time or received was secret. Her defense? They weren't marked classified. They couldn't be marked classified because by not using government servers, she actually prevented the government from reviewing her emails. It is a federal crime to negligently handle classified information under 18 U.S.C. 1924. It is a federal Class A felony under 18 U.S.C. 798. She's committed a Class A misdemeanor under 18 U.S.C. 1924. If there's a connection between Cairo and Benghazi, she said this, there's no connection between the two. Your experts knew the truth. Your spokesperson knew the truth. Greg Hicks knew the truth. But what troubles me more is I think you knew the truth. You tell the American people one thing, tell your family an entirely different story. When she certified under oath, quote, under penalty of perjury to a federal judge that she had surrendered all of her emails to the State Department, in fact, she had not. My verdict, based on the evidence, is guilty. What story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy. That After the inauguration in 1993, the Clintons fired the White House Travel Office employees, allowing their wealthy Hollywood friends to take over the lucrative travel business. This led to investigations by the FBI, DOJ, GAO, Oversight Committee, and the Whitewater Independent Council. The Clintons claimed the firings were due to financial misdeeds, but the employees were cleared on all counts. Hillary Clinton allegedly played a central role in the firings, Yet in her sworn testimony, she claimed she was not involved. The independent counsel found this to be factually inaccurate and that she made factually false statements. The Clintons were forced to remove their friends and reinstate the previous employees. Vince Foster, the longtime friend and companion of Hillary Clinton, was significantly involved in several Clinton scandals. Due to the strange circumstances surrounding his death in 1993, an investigation ensued. Before the police arrived, Clinton staffers illegally removed boxes of documents on Whitewater and presumably Travelgate and other sensitive issues. President Clinton put his wife in charge of the most expensive program in the country. There was a national outrage that the unelected, unqualified First Lady was going to design America's health care system. In a 1993 interview, Hillary Clinton admitted I am not an expert on health care. I'm not somebody who has studied it. Hillary Clinton kept the Presidential Task Force on National Health Care Reform shrouded in such secrecy that a federal judge threatened to hold the administration in contempt. Two years later, 
the health care plan was a 1,342-page nightmare, including gatekeepers, health alliances, purchasing cooperatives, new and higher taxes, and restrictions on choosing doctors. Physicians, hospitals, large and small businesses, insurance companies, Democrats, Republicans, and the general public rejected the program, and it failed disastrously. The General Accounting Office put a price tag of $32 million on Hillary Clinton's health care fiasco. For dishonesty, Hillary Clinton and others were fined $450,000. Court costs to taxpayers were $725,000. In 1996, with Hillary Care fresh in their minds, Americans voted both the Senate and the House into Republican hands for the first time in over four decades. In 1994, President Clinton's Attorney General Janet Reno initiated an investigation focusing on fraud accusations against the Clintons regarding their real estate venture, Whitewater Development Corporation, co-owned with their friends Jim and Susan McDougall. Hillary Clinton was the central figure, and the probe revealed pervasive conflicts of interest between the Rose Law Firm, where Hillary Clinton was partner, and its client, Madison Guarantee, owned by Clinton business partner, Jim McDougall. Hillary Clinton claimed billing records subpoenaed and critical to the investigation were lost. It is presumed they were stolen from Vince Foster's office the night he died. 19 months later, following the Clinton's acquittal, many of the missing records reappeared in the Clinton's residence. As they were covered with Hillary Clinton's fingerprints, she fell under suspicion of obstruction of justice. Their business partner, Susan McDougall, refused to testify against the Clintons, assuring they were not charged. Susan McDougall went to prison for her silence, but was pardoned by President Clinton. Fifteen Clinton associates were convicted of 40 federal crimes related to Whitewater. The Independent Counsel's report highlighted the president's abundant and calculating lies under oath obstruction of justice, and abuse of power. During this case, many other alleged abuses were uncovered. The four-and-a-half-year expanded investigation cost taxpayers $145 million. Hillary Clinton's trades in cattle futures raised suspicions of improprieties as her very first trade of $5,000 quickly turned into over $490,000. She refused to release her tax returns for the years in question. Hillary Clinton insisted that she made all the investment decisions herself. The investigation proved her trades were actually placed by her friend James Blair through the brokerage firm Refco. James Blair was outside counsel for Tyson Foods, the largest employer in Arkansas, which is state-regulated. The perception was Mrs. Clinton received preferential treatment and incredible financial returns as a way to garner favor with her husband, then governor of Arkansas. Refco was investigated and paid the largest fines in the history of the exchange. Hillary Clinton ignored Senate rules and reporting requirements for the hiring of staff and non-paid fellows, breaking the Senate Code of Official Conduct and hiding multiple conflicts of interest. She was investigated by the Senate Select Committee on Ethics. Hillary Clinton's long history of campaign finance abuses continued. Jeffrey Thompson and other fundraising bundlers for her failed 2008 presidential campaign pled guilty to conspiracy and campaign finance law violations. President Obama nominated Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. In 2014, the State Department spokesperson was asked to identify one tangible achievement from Hillary Clinton's four years as Secretary of State. She responded, I am certain those who were here at the time, who worked hard on that effort, could point out one. Secretary Clinton's tenure had no signature doctrine or diplomatic breakthrough. It was, however, four more years of scandals. The Clinton State Department wasted $80 million on a U.S. consulate in northern Afghanistan, which will never be completed. 
Under Clinton's name, the Foreign Service gathered details on foreign diplomats, our allies and officials of the UN, including internet usernames, email addresses, credit card numbers, fingerprints, frequent flyer account numbers, and work schedules. The Clinton State Department lost approximately $6 billion due to improper filing of contracts. The FBI, CIA, and the DOJ requested that Boko Haram be designated as a terrorist group so the agencies could pursue them. Secretary Clinton declined, and the group continued its reign of terror, including the kidnapping of 300 schoolgirls in Nigeria. A special investigator for the State Department claims probes into illegal acts by the Diplomatic Security Service and ambassadors were influenced, manipulated, or simply called off under Hillary Clinton. These include sexual assaults by State Department security officials in Beirut, endemic engagement of prostitutes by Hillary Clinton's security detail, drug use by State Department contractors in Baghdad, solicitation of child male prostitutes by U.S. Ambassador to Belgium. Secretary Clinton's spokesperson claimed Hillary Clinton had no knowledge of any of the scandals in her State Department. We learned of it from the media and don't know anything beyond what's been reported. The United States mission in Benghazi, Libya was attacked on September 11, 2012. As Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State at the time, she is at the heart of the cover-up investigation. When she finally testified to Congress four months after the attack, she famously stated, The fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest? Or was it because guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? Hillary Clinton testified that she submitted all documents requested by Congress. 20 months later, and only through a Freedom of Information Act request, 41 new documents were released, including changes to Ambassador Susan Rice's talking points. More documents are still being withheld. issues and they're going back and asking me and others that have known her since the beginning what what is it about hillary and hillary alex has had a mental issue since day one she can't she does not like people she is an animal she's everything i've told you she is and it is a mental problem and that's what's causing her trouble running this election to be quite honest you you can't make her a people person you just can't do it According to Page Six, Secret Service agent Gary Byrne writes in his new tell-all book that Hillary repeatedly screamed obscenities at her husband, Secret Service personnel, and White House staffers, all of whom lived in terror of her next tirade. Secret Service agents had discussions about the possibility that they would have to protect Bill from his wife's physical attacks. Burns right had one violent encounter the morning of a key presidential address to the nation. The World Federalist Association, or WFA, is one of the largest organizations that openly promote world government. Periodically, the WFA extends a Global Governance Award to a prominent individual pushing for the same goal. Former CBS anchorman Walter Cronkite was among the recipients of the WFA Award. Thank you very much. 
But today we must develop federal structures on a global level to deal with world problems. We need a system of enforceable world law, a democratic federal world government. Nationhood as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. For decades you've told us the way it is. But tonight we honor you for fighting for the way it could be.